Hello everybody, welcome back to Bravely Default 2. In this one, I'm going to show you guys my second grind spot. Um, again, this is going to have been part, th part of the way through my little um, gameplay walkthrough series. We're trying to get through everything in the game, even though this is somewhat blind, I am making sure that I'm getting everything as we go through. Either way, first up then, let me show you guys the location. As you can see, we're right outside the, uh, the second city that we come to here. Everything's already running away from me, so that's all good. Uh, the route that you want to take, and these are actually the enemies that I'm going to recommend that you farm. The ants seem to give me the best. Um, XP combination um, as we go through this soon. Now the route that I recommend you take is just here to the north. And as you see, we've got this little um, group of rocks here, and they actually have like little holes in and stuff. They're almost like their own little uh, miniature ants nest. And you just kind of want to go in a round circle like this, uh, and what you'll find is that the ants continually spawn in and around these rocks. So you can go in a nice little neat circle here. Um, and just pick off the ants. Feel free to get the pigs as well, if that's if that's something that you want to do. Uh, but there's a reason that I'm suggesting that you target a particular type of enemy. Now, now that, now that I've shown the spot, there's a couple of other things that I feel like we should talk about. First up, I recommend that you t you bring at least two black mages um, in your party, and I have given Gloria the, uh, the freelancer as a subclass, because she's going to be using the... Um, the search ability, I think it's called, uh, not, not called search, but anyway, we're going to get some items. Anyway, let me show you guys kind of a demonstration battle here uh, as to what I recommend. So in the fight then, uh, you are going to get between three and six enemies most of the time. Uh, in the, it, when it's night time, it is usually five or six. Uh, in the daytime, you get less. Uh, with the birds, I wouldn't worry about them too much. I've yet to kill one. I don't quite know what happens. They seem to be weak to earth, but I haven't had it um, kill one yet. Anyway, so what I recommend is using your black mages one turn at a time. Oop, I keep on accidentally using extra turns here. Stop that. Uh, and do an all um, attack on there. For those that don't know on the switch, you press the... I believe it's the Y button. Let me, let me do that again. Yeah, it's the Y button to attack all of the enemies out there. So we're going to do that twice. With Gloria, I don't mind actually doing this three times. We're going to have her forage. And this is going to have her grab a load of items as we go through. Now that is pretty... Pretty important, you guys are going to see why in a second. Let me go ahead and get another set of fire on here. And the reason I'm doing this one at a time is because I'm going to give you guys a secondary point to this in a second, which um, can have enemies effectively come into the battle in waves, and that is how you get yourself more fights. So what I'm going to recommend that you do is, uh, when it turns night time, when you're more likely to get even more enemies in these encounters, is to use, and I'm going to do one in the day here, just to kind of show you guys how this works. Is to use an insect nectar. Now, I'm really sorry, I don't know how we farm these. I just happen to have 15 in my inventory, I don't know where they've appeared from. Um, and no more have dropped from the ants themselves, and they are not sold at the vendor. So I don't know if I found these in a chest, or if I found these in um, as a quest reward. And if, if any of you guys know exactly where these come from, let me know. Um, but I'm going to pop one of these, and as you can see, not only um, do these no longer run away from me, they come and get me. And what you'll find is now, when we attack these, we'll get a second wave of enemies. Now, I do also have an alternate spot for those that want to do something similar to this. Um, so if you guys want to see that, just hold out. I apologize, this could be probably this could probably be better edited, but I'm terrible with um, Premiere at the moment. I bought it the other day, <laughs> so I could start trying to learn it. But as you guys will see here then, when we go through this battle, um, the reason I'm not just kind of uh, pumping these ones with just straight up three um, actions, we can actually just attack this one out. Is because when this second set comes through, as you can see with Glory, you're still you've still got the negative BP and you give them free hits. So that's why I'm doing it the way that I'm doing it. Okay then, so cutting to several waves later. Uh, it, it's rare that you get four waves when you do, as you can see, uh, it is a massive JP boost, uh, which is just fantastic for the group. Uh, which is why I recommend using the lures, which is what makes that more likely to happen. Each one seems to last around five to ten minutes, and they persist after tents as well. So if you need to heal uh, or anything like that, you can feel free to go ahead and use, use a tent to kind of give yourself some recovery if you need it. That's all good. Uh, in addition to that, then, I want to explain why we're using Forage to join the battle. Uh, first up, it's going to continually replenish your items, you can see. I've only, I think I came out here with 30 potions, and we've gotten those kind of just added in. I came out with 10 tents, so I've used 10, but a lot of those I re-picked back up, so 
Um, I've really only used two tents. But the most important reason that we're going to be using forage, in particular if you've uh, ground early like I did before we got Gloria in, is they're actually going to be picking up um, a load of these, which are rare for sure. And the 50% applies as well, which I didn't realize because I've been saving those for you guys. Um, and we can just boost Gloria to be a little bit closer to the rest of the party, right? So we're going to get all of this on there like this. Um, and that just kind of allows us to get Gloria back in line with the party. Now, of course, I did say I was going to give you guys a second place, and I'm going to show you guys the route. I know we're going to have a bit of a dirty cut um, from a minute ago, but we're going to want to head down this way. And I'm going to show you guys a method for doing something similar, but without the lure. So in here we have these little flying enemies. There are some enemies that are a little tougher. Uh, just make sure you bring along a couple of white mages instead of black mages. Or maybe even a couple of black mages and white mages. And in the center of here we're going to have these little flying enemies that uh, that spawn in. Let me see if we can just get a couple to, to appear. Okay then, so we should be able to do it now. What we're looking for is when you get these two birds here that are quite close together, look. Now, it's not easy to do this all of the time, but as you can see, you can get them in this corner. If we strike both of them, we'll trigger a similar event um, to what we do when we're using the lures. So, basically, these will now continually bring waves in. It'll be between two and three. <clears throat> but I wanted to show you the battle for this one because the... Um, the elemental thing that looks like a, a bomb on there is not a bomb. It is actually an undead uh, foe. Now... I'm just going to try and rush through this for the sake for the sake of uh, for the sake of speed here. The way to take that down uh, is actually with a cure spell. So as long as you bring a a, a white mage into this, we do this and expect it to go down pretty quickly, like so. Uh, so yeah, I just, I just wanted to make sure that we uh, that I showed that. So obviously I'm going to cut to the end of this battle now. Okay then, so, I've shown the two spots that I think are pretty decent for gaining uh, XP and job points at this point of the game. Uh, which is which is still fairly early on, in my opinion. Uh, a lot of people have been asking for, like, combination job guides and that kind of thing. And whilst I don't have job combination guide right now, I have been looking at some of the abilities that we have here. And I definitely have some things that I think you should try to get on most of your characters, at least for now. Uh, and it's mostly to do with the passives. Um, there are some other recommendations. The Black Mage and White Mage go quite well together, for example, because they use the same base weapon um, and use most of the similar stats, even though their uh, effectiveness kind of changes between them. The Black Mage also seems to synergize with the Monk, means the Monk can actually use the staff pretty well as well as, well as that. And the Freelancer can synergize with anything. If you uh, bring up the stats here, you can see that... Um, Whichever job you make the main job, it seems to just naturally have a stat bonus over it. Um, so if you are crazy enough to master all of these, you would probably want the Freelancer as your main, and then this is just going to be additional abilities, depending on what you want to have with it. Um, so in terms of the passives then that I would probably recommend, uh, there is one in the Black Mage one. This is mainly for... Wow, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. This is mainly for casters, and there's this a spear attack just here. Um, wow, well, I pressed the wrong button again. Which allows you to regain MP each time you do a basic attack on an enemy. Uh, this one, drain attack, is probably good for any character. Oh, I keep pressing the wrong buttons, I'm so sorry. Probably good for any character. Wow, I'm doing it again. I just can't get my head around the buttons. Um, and this allows you to heal yourself on attack, which is good for any character. In fact, I would recommend that, that probably goes on any melee character. Um... So, yeah. I mean, it doesn't even have to be melee, does it? So, even if you've got a bow, like anybody, that's probably pretty good. Uh, especially if you decide to go with the Vanguard. If you go with the Vanguard and you've got that on, then you, it, the, the character that you're using that on is just going to be almost unkillable. Particularly if you combine it with the Defensive Offense, which basically makes it so that when you perform normal attacks, you are more shielded. So these passives together are probably very, very potent, particularly if you have someone that want to, you want to be doing physical attacks. You're going to want to have defensive offense and drain attack on um, as your passives. Probably have the freelancer as the main character with the added abilities from the vanguard, for example. And that's going to make a very, very nice tanky character. The only um, counteraction to that is maybe you'd go vanguard crossed with the white mage 
uh, to make a tank. The reason for th that you might do that is that the Vanguard does have higher um, chance of being targeted. So if you want to create a tank, you're probably going to want to have the Vanguard up front. Uh, and you're going to want to equip it with all of the armor and items that make it um, targeted by the enemy. Which, if you happen to have any squishier characters, will just help you absorb some of that damage. Um, I don't think there's anything else that I feel like I need to say right now. If there's anything I've missed, or you guys have any zones or any ideas of your own that you'd like me to talk about, let me know in the comments, and I shall catch you all in the next video.